Hey friends, welcome back to the Guitar Max channel. So this guitar right here is the Latitude Cardinal Headless Guitar, and this guitar has the lowest action I have ever played. But how can the guitar with the lowest action I've ever played cost less than $400? That can't be right. Okay, so I've been checking out a lot of Latitude guitars lately. I checked out a couple of LP style guitars, one with a traditional body and one with a really thin body that was really cool. And a lot of the Latitude models are like that, where it's a traditional design that they then add some more modern features to. Well, this one here is a considerably more modern design, as you can see. But look, I've checked out a few headless guitars before, but when I grabbed this one, I was in disbelief at how low the action was. And when I say low action, I don't just mean that the strings are slammed down right onto the frets, but this is actually a playable, usable, super low action. Now, I'll go over all the specs of this guitar in a moment, but the feature I wanna talk about to begin with, which is what uh, allows them to achieve a super low action, is this little thing right up here the zero fret. Now zero frets technically are nothing new, but there's been a big resurgence in the use of a zero fret, especially on headless guitars. So what does a zero fret do exactly? So, you know, like the number zero implies, it's before the first fret and it's right next to where the nut is. And what ends up happening is when you have a zero fret on the guitar, it actually replaces part of the purpose for having the nut. The zero fret sets the height of the strings down here by the nut. And so rather than having the nut set the height of the strings, uh, the nut slots are actually generally cut a little bit lower than the zero fret is. So the strings kind of go down into the nut and then the nut is just used to achieve the string spacing. And the big key here is that when the string, when the open strings are vibrating, it's vibrating from the zero fret down to the saddle here, rather than uh, from the saddle to the nut, like it would be on a guitar that doesn't have a zero fret. Now, one way to sort of visualize this and how it affects the action of the guitar is just imagine you're playing a regular guitar and let's say you, you are uh, fretting on the fifth fret, you know, you're playing a note on the fifth fret. Well, imagine how close the action is gonna be on the sixth fret, right? Because you're already pressing the string down on another fret, so that makes it very, very, that, you know, it brings the string closer to the frets on the rest of the neck. So that same thing is happening, only it happens on the open strings because of this zero fret there. Anyway, guys, I hope that makes sense. But uh, what it all comes down to here is that the, uh, the action on this guitar is just insanely low. You know, and again, it's usable low action, so I'm not getting any buzzing or choked notes. And when I measure this, and I'm measuring this at the 12th fret on the low, that's musically low E string, I'm getting about 1 32nd. And people typically measure action in 64ths of an inch, so it'd be about 2 64ths, which is extremely low. That's at the 12th fret. If you move down here closer to, uh, closer to the zero fret and the headstock, I mean, it's ridiculous. I mean, it's like down to 1 64th. So when you press down on the strings, you know, in this part of the neck here, it almost feels like the string is not even moving at all when you press down on it, but it is, and it plays incredible. Okay, let's talk about some of the other specs of the guitar. So it's an ash body. Now the body and the neck has a satin finish, so it's got a really, really beautiful wood grain. It's sort of an open pour finish, so you can feel the wood grain through the finish. It's a five piece roasted maple neck. And these two strips in the middle here are Paduk wood. Now the fretboard is rosewood and it's 24 frets, which I love. So you get the full two octaves on the fretboard there. And these are these beautiful stainless steel rounded ball end frets. Now these are not really, really big frets. These are kind of medium frets, but they're finished beautifully. Now, obviously it's a headless guitar and you've got your tuners down here. One of the super cool things about the bridge uh, that they're using on this guitar is it has this little tiny hand crank here and it's magnetized so, so it attaches itself to the top of the bridge and then you can pull it out. And what you do is you can place this in one of the tuners and then crank it 
to tighten the string up. Now that's really useful uh, when you're changing strings. Now these tuners, you, you can actually, you know, they've got burled edges on them and everything, so you can actually turn them pretty easily with your fingers if you're making small tuning adjustments. But having this little extra crank there is really helpful when you're putting on new strings or maybe changing tunings, you know, drop tuning or something like that, where you have to make larger tuning adjustments to the strings. Now the controls are very straightforward. It's just a three-way toggle switch, a single volume and single tone. And one little detail that I really like about this is the location of the jack, the output jack, which is right back here. So for one, it makes the jack go in at a downwards angle, so it's more difficult to accidentally pull the cable out. But the other thing is that allows you to have the guitar on either leg. You can have it like that, and you can even like put it on this, this lower piece right there if you want to have the neck up really high. And that keeps the cable coming out, and the cable's not going to be poking into your legs or anything like that. So it's a very thoughtful design as far as the output jack location. So guys, as usual, there's a few other features I want to show you about this guitar, but I want to go ahead and get into the sound demo next. Now I'm going to plug this into my Fender GTX 100 amplifier, go through some standard, uh, standard variety of tones, and we can listen to uh, how the guitar sounds. And then I want to talk a little bit more about the playability of the guitar and just how this guitar feels to play with this, this crazy low action. Now, real quick, guys, if you enjoy videos like this, checking out cool new affordable guitars and also staying up on all the latest news in the guitar universe, and you have not already subscribed, please consider subscribing right now. Okay, guys, this is the Latitude Cardinal headless guitar. Let's go ahead and plug this in and listen to how it sounds. Okay guys, so let's talk about the playability of this guitar and the neck in particular. So one thing I'm, you know, I was kind of thinking about while I was playing this uh, is that there's no excuses with this guitar because it's so easy to play. If you screw up a lick or if your technique is not very good, 
you can't blame it on the guitar because this neck, I mean, with the satin finish, the profile of the neck, which is like a, you know, kind of a C, D shape, it's pretty flat and thin. These rounded ball in frets, they're polished really nicely, super low action. Of course, there's, you know, no parts of the body that get in the way of your hand or anything like that. I hate to say it, but, you know, if you screw up a lick on this guitar, you're going to screw up that same lick on every guitar because this guitar it gets out of your way. It's so easy to play. I think it's kind of a standby excuse if you're, uh, you know, if you pick up some old guitar or something, or you know, a guitar that's been sitting in the corner of somebody's uh, living room for like two years, getting dust on it, and they're like, "Hey, play us a song," and you grab it, and it's the guitar is just a disaster. You kind of be like, "Oh well, you know, this this guitar's got some issues or something, right?" You can you can blame it on the instrument a little bit. You can't do that with this guitar. So the bottom line is that this guitar is extremely easy to play and extremely comfortable. I mean, obviously the, the body is a very modern design, you know, ergonomically shaped and all of that. It's got a nice belly cut on the back here. And also the neck joint, it's a bolt-on neck joint, but it's it, a little hard to see on the video here, but it kind of, uh, kind of tapers down, the neck joint kind of tapers down to dive into the neck wood there. So. You know, it makes it so that neck joint doesn't really get in your way too much. So I think overall, if you're looking for a guitar that's going to let you play some more advanced licks and things with wide stretches and so forth, um, and, and then you want something that's modern like this, and you don't want something that's going to be super expensive, then uh, this, I think, is a really good choice. Because, again, like I said in the beginning of the video, less than 400 bucks for this guitar. And I should mention that... The price includes a very nice gig bag. Now, Latitude, to me, has uh, sort of become famous for uh, having nice packaging and that kind of stuff. The way they ship the guitars, they're very well protected. They usually have, like, foam inserts. Not styrofoam, but like that thick rubber foam uh, in the boxes and stuff to protect the guitars. And some of the earlier ones, came, like the standard guitars, came in, like, this really cool silk bag. And this one comes with this nice... Uh, nice gig bag here. So of course it's a headless guitar, so this is smaller than usual, but yeah, it's got a support for the neck and everything and heavy-duty zippers, backpack straps, all that kind of stuff. Travel the world with this thing. Now one thing here about this guitar regarding the listings and the information available for these guitars is that I wish I could get more info on the pickups. They sound fine to me. I mean, they're pretty well balanced. Uh, I wouldn't say they have any sort of unique character to them, and that can be a good thing and a bad thing in some ways. Um, they're sort of the kind of pickups that you just kind of forget about while you're playing the guitar. And to my ears, they're kind of medium output pickups, but yeah, I, I don't know too much about them as far as the, uh, the specs and so forth. But how did they sound to you? How does the guitar sound to you guys? Let me know in the comments. Now, the other thing I should mention about this is that there are two different color options. This is, of course, the natural finish, uh, natural ash finish. And there's also a black, a satin black finish. And it's the same kind of satin open pore finish, but just with like a black uh, black color instead of the, uh, the natural clear. As usual, I'll put a link for the different colors down in the video description below. But guys, let me ask you, you know, because I've been raving about the low action on this guitar. What's the guitar with the lowest action that you've ever played? And has anyone else out there played one of these new guitars from Latitude? So guys, as usual, let me know what you think of this guitar down in the comments section below. Now down in the video description, I will have links for everything I was talking about in the video. Links for the guitar, as well as the amplifier I was using, that was the Fender GTX 100. And I will also have a link down there for the backing track I was playing too. That, that's from the Backing Tracks by Tim channel. I will also have my social media down there, all that good stuff. And guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll talk to you soon.